Okay, and you guys can see. Great. We've got DFMO. Okay. I haven't had a chance. Damn. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hey, look at that. There's the bug. Um, this is the bug from last time. Um, that I just said I hadn't had a chance to do. Um, and there it was. All right. Um, oh, that's what happened. Wait, why are we... Okay. Alright, well, we found the bug from last time. <laughs> That's funny. It's like exactly what they say. You take a little time off looking at something and all of a sudden it just works. Um, there we go. fix one bug already great all right so let's just um pull up your mats come on come on man my computer is being horrific today this is just it's really bad i don't know what's wrong but so i apologize if if things are choppy or whatever because i yeah the last few meetings were way less than smooth so oh my god wow it's horrible oh my just decided that it doesn't want to work at all. So, um, all right. So let's see. Let's just put this here and see if we fix this. All right. So, Sahil, what do we got for you today? Mm, I just completed all the bugs on lint commit one. All There's right. still one 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 CI error that I want to talk about. That is a around macOS. It is not getting some child watcher. I don't know it should be uh, having a event loop, but it looks like it doesn't have something. Okay. Anything else? The uh, other thing is that I like as as you told, I changed the archive thing into an operation, okay. and I have pushed a sample code, some sample code, so that uh, I can just get some input and I also want to talk about how to test it because there are two ways. One is like patching everything, another would be like uh, creating actual files for testing and trying to compress them and decompress them. Okay. Um... All right, so you said uh, you've written some operations. Um, yes, you I, I renamed that pair. The pair number okay. should be the same. It is double one two eight. What is going on? Okay, 
So Okay. All right. Um, and then let's see, Hashim. So, what do you or anything else from you, Sahil? No, that's the only two things. Like these two weeks, the last week and this coming week is my. I'm having my final exam. So okay. Good luck. I was just a bit busy with that, so haven't done much, but yeah, I'm doing something with that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, good. Good luck with finals. It's always tough. All right. So, Hashim, uh, what do we got for you today? Okay. So, uh, yeah, I pushed this uh, ensemble notebook. Okay. Um, uh, I tried uh, what we discussed, like, uh, uh, you know. Uh, trying the accuracy thing, uh, comparing it with the previous models and seeing if Ensemble works better, and it didn't. So I just uh, made this. I, I I showed final predictions instead of uh, the accuracy and stuff. Okay. So. Um, other than that, uh, yeah. All right. Let's see. So maybe. I mean, it would, ideally, we could find a data set where it does work better, right? And then show accuracy because that, I mean, we yeah, you see what I'm saying, right? Like, could we just switch out the data set? Um, because that is, you know, it's not ideal to have the example not show that it's better. Um, I was thinking it would be uh, complicated because uh, because uh, how we cannot uh, effectively tune the models. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Um, let's see. I need to figure out how. I gotta start this up. Okay, I'll get this ready. So, what else did you want to talk about today? Anything else? Yeah, there were uh, some CI errors that I wasn't sure about on the test notebooks stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there we go. Okay. Um, CIRs that you weren't sure about on the test notebooks. Okay. So. Let's see, can we just download this? Really, it named it with TXT still. All right, great. Good job, Windows. Um, let's see. All right, so um, testing. Oh, all right, great. So um, let's just put this here. Okay. 
All right, so let's take a look at this lint commits PR. Um, so that would be, yeah, we'll take a look at the archive stuff. So. so you say that we're just facing a Mac OS error here. Um, let's see if it should fail. There's kind of, should, should, sweet. All right, not sure why this is. Failing or a style. Uh, oh, did they finally? Oh, they updated. Did they update something? JS Beautify. Because that's not Python. Python reflects is something in JS. Yeah, it looks like. Well, let's see. Is the main CI failing? Um, Let's try, it's probably not, let's see, it's probably still using the cache. I wonder if we update from the cache, if it will still um, fail. Uh, I bet there's just a, uh, okay, what happened? Um, so this, okay, uh, this JS Beautify. I bet they updated this to change the way that it works or something. So let me make a note of that. So um, we, it looks like JS is formatting uh, code differently than it used to, um, perhaps related to an update to their tool, which would be really weird, but we'll see. Um, um, let's see, yeah, it looks like there's a new version from what I had, so quite, quite possible that it um, did indeed get weird. So let's see. Um, where is this? So yeah, run. Um, was it style equals formed? All right, okay, it's failing for me too. So my guess is that there's an updated, yeah, it looks like uh, they've updated something. Um, so we probably just need to update those files. So All right. I wonder if we can do multiple files. All right, great. There we go. Oh, hey, did it finally put the new line at the end of the file? Oh, wow. Yay. All right. They finally fixed that stupid bug. All right. Fantastic. All right. So we'll just push this as a commit. Um, that was really annoying. They had this bug where you would say, just put the new line at the end of the file, and then it wouldn't do that. Um, so that's annoying. All right, so we'll just commit this to the master branch. Style. Um, run JS Beautify. Very 
version. Okay, and I wonder what's going to happen on the master branch. It'll probably kick it off. Um, so we'll probably have to go mm -hmm. and update. Why don't we create another issue? Hmm? Why don't we create another issue? It might be like breaking something. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. Um, I think if we just update it throughout, let's see. Um, June or June fourteenth. Yeah, it must just be a cache. What do you? I guess I don't quite understand what you're saying. Um, so let's grab that commit um, and push it so uh, so commit fixes this. Um, Base master into uh, branch. Okay, great. So if you rebase master into the PR branch, then that should be fixed. Um, okay, and so this is the um, Mac OS. Okay, so now we have the Mac OS one. Um, could not add child handler. Oh, great, this bug. Um, okay, um, this thing is annoying. All right, so, oh God, I hate this stupid thing. Okay, um, this happens when you're trying to run sub processes from an event loop that's not in the main process usually, or is not the main event loop, um, which is weird that we haven't run into this. Um, but but this is passing on Linux. So yeah, but it's different. Different. It's different across. Just because it's passing on Linux doesn't necessarily mean that it would pass on on Mac or Windows, because um, this is, I mean, so, okay, so, so. what it is actually about, I've seen this before also. Yeah. What happens here? What happens in this kind of error? I have seen this error before also, so I just wanted to know. Yeah, cool, so what, what do you what do you see as the, as the issue? I think that there is no loop, which is, uh, like, there is no main event loop in which it should be there. But when we use async test case, we have a menu, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah. Is this it? Yeah, I was going to say, I bet it has to do with the fact that we're doing it. Does it have to do, let's see. I wonder if it will give different behavior if we don't do it within a generator. Um, let's see. Um, Let's let's just do this real quick. Should validate, should not validate. Um, test. Uh, okay. Just for shits and giggles. Um, I doubt. Actually, I doubt this is the case. But. Um, but I'm curious now. So. Um, so Mac OS. Okay. Um, So, yeah, okay, great. And we don't have a macOS system to really test on here. 
Um, what could we do? So, cannot add child to handle add child watcher does not have a loop attached. Okay. Yes, you can always feel feel free to make new issues as you want. So I have listed down what should be done and what are the improvement areas here. Should be a good guide for someone to pick up or for me only if I pick it up. Yeah. Path which will be formed after mutations so applied. So, so it's just for real mercy. Remove cache download prior to check for util net. Need to search all the files. It's resolved to directory. Okay. Files of all caps like chain shot. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. Um. All right, so you know, be written in all caps. Okay, so these would, these should be written in all caps. Um, was there a case where, like, change log should always be in all caps? So, um, is there a case? No, that there, there are certain file paths, like for workflows or something, and templates and all, where folder names are capital. Okay. Uh, so it looks annoying in. Yeah. Comment message. Yeah. Um, Other than change log or something that is single. Yeah. Uh, let's and and let's just also so let's not get too far down into this too, right? Um, because I think I think that that okay. So the functions slash class names, you know, um, we don't want those to fail, um, to fail a validation, right? Um, the uh, the tests so the test one we need to make sure that we do um we need to make sure that we do number two we need to make sure that we do number three um i think we can wait on four just because that and we need to do five um so actually yeah we need five so because the the other thing is you know there's there's this is just like a most like we want to catch 90 you know we want to catch a lot of things right we don't we don't need to catch everything because at the end of the day like we can just check the ci job and see why it's failing right um and we can just still merge a commit even though it, it fails um but i think that um uh, i think that so do you think do you see this as something like what do you like do you see this as something that will be easy to to complete here, or is this something that's going to take a significant amount of work? Probably three would take some time. Uh, one uh, and two could be done pretty fast. Okay, so let's just do one and two then, and then we'll merge this in and we'll create an issue. Um, so let's see. So we'll create an issue to track the implementation of three. Um, so... Okay, so looking at close to complete. Um, let's create an issue for um, we'll implement one and two within the PR. Uh, we'll track um, implementation of three through five within the issue. Um, you can, I mean, you can just, 
you know, make it like a checklist, right? And then, uh, so okay. let's make make the issue, or I'll, I'll just create the issue right now so we see what I'm talking about, right? So, um, Right, so okay. I'll just put that we should see this for full details. All right, um, and we'll call this what service dev lint commits, right? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, okay, um, so we'll track these guys here. So implemented DC as body mutation. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, oops. So we've got this, um, and let's see. So we'll check this up. Actually, okay. If you submit this issue, then you can. Um, if you submit this issue, then you can check them off. But if I submit it, you won't have permissions to check them off. I just realized. So let me just paste so it. So I'll make an issue. Okay. Um, great. Um, so, all right. So, and then, okay. So we're still, so we're seeing this Mac OS issue, right? Um, so let's take a look and see what happened there in that CI run. Same, same problem. Um, cannot add child handler. The child watcher does not have a loop attached. Hmm. The child watcher does not have a loop attached. So did you say you run into this before? What did you find as the issue previously? 
uh, I, I didn't have any clear correlation with any other thing. I just, you know, refactored the same test and it worked. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I was asking, like, what's the solution? Um... It was probably in some of the download progress one PS that I had the same issue with Mac OS. And uh, later on, I changed some something like I just refactored the same test with same functions and it worked. Okay. So you refactored it, same test, same function, self self and commit objects and commits. Okay, so okay. Uh, let's see. So, why are you mad? It is mad, obviously, because of the create sub process stuff. So, um so cannot add child handler. The child watcher does not have a loop attached. So add child handler. Child watcher does not have a loop attached. So let's take a look at the missing text case. So, create the test case loop that run until complete. So let's self dot loop is async io get event loop. Okay. So I I think it may be like in the test itself we are making an object of the lit commit class which uh, might not have a loop attached to it because uh, it is not being called from the run rather than uh, calling another use function inside it yeah yeah can that be anything um you need to look it into the test itself yeah i saw what you were talking about um let's see yeah, you create an instance of this class. Uh, is that what you're saying, right? At the class scope in the test case? You're saying that you created this at the at this class scope, right? And that's yes, what you're thinking exactly. might be an issue. Okay. Um, let's see, I see that. Um, This is doing this stupid thing to me again. Okay, never mind. Test dot service dot. Where are we? Oh, <laughs> that explains that. Um, okay. So, let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, I doubt it's that generator. Um,
All right, so I'm thinking I'm thinking we might want to try to go ahead and um, create a new event loop at the class scope here. Um, um, or even let's just do it at the test scope and see what happens. Um, okay, so this child watcher stuff. Um, this is annoying. Do we have sys? We don't. All right, so answer go oh, get child watcher. So it was complaining about um self.loop so setup was never called wait a minute setup was never called oh does this not call setup on default test cases that shouldn't affect it though all right, so I saw a similar issue on another repo, like it's not development, but some other project. So they did something adding a safe child watcher. They the added a safe child watch. watcher too. Okay, yeah, yes. see, that's what I was thinking the solution was going to be here. Um, yeah, I guess we should do safe child watcher. Um, Let's just do this watcher. Set child watcher. Okay. I think this accepts. No, it does not. Hmm. Attach loop? No. Okay. Da, 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 da. So, specifically, then we assume the other process is executed. Abstract child watcher, data child watcher, uh, multi loop child watcher. Mm, shall I share that PR which fixed this issue in another report? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I see the changes. Are they using the, or well, we'll see it. Get event loop policy, watch our touch loop. Okay. Great. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. What is that? Get event loop policy. So return the current process wide policy. Policy set child watcher. Um, so child watcher attached loop. C 
set event loop, none, return loop. Okay, so. Yeah, I think they pass loop explicitly everywhere. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because they pass loop explicitly everywhere. Um, so, will this... So, our old thing was... Okay, so let's just go back to that. So, we did the loop... Um, loop equals get event loop. Let's just add this here and see what happens. Or no, we don't want to add that there. Um, we'll just do it here. All right, let's try this. Okay, fuck, yeah. Um, let's think about this a little harder. Um, so it's mad because the we cannot add child handler. Child watcher does not have loop attached. Okay, so the question really in my mind is why have we not run into this before <laughs> because we're calling out sub processes other places um so it's because make docs was a very similar thing right you huh? execute processes from there say again and we executed we implemented another cmd make docs make docs and it had also the same thing of executing process sub processes yeah, it wasn't run as... Was it run within a test case, though? Yes, it was run within a test case. Okay, so let's see. But we didn't have that uh, class instantiation, something like that. Mm. We directly called it from CLI and then uh, captured the output. Ah, ah, oh, okay, so... Docs, okay, so... All right. Um, uh, so, make docs. Okay. All right. So. Okay, but we patch sub process exec, that's why. That explains why we didn't run into this issue. Um, so it's something wrong with the test harness. Um, I wonder if switching to, let's see. This command sequence, yeah. So we're patching sub process exec here. Um, all right, we spent a lot of time on this. Um, let's see. I had a channel watcher does not have a loop attached. So let's see for a second. Um, why do we need, let's check out why we need to run those git commands. First commit message style. Git log. Or let's see what ls tree. So and this is the extension. So yeah, that's right. Didn't we talk? I think we talked about this last week too. So, so we um, obviously, you know, ideally we fix the uh, bug with the test cases, but async I related bugs can be very tricky, especially when there's something like this that is not even the same across platforms. And I would assume none of us have a Mac. So, um, unless that assumption is wrong, does anybody have a Mac? <laughs> 
No. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so in that case, let's try to fix the bug by, you know, changing the behavior. Um, so, or work around the bug. So this get all extensions, um, basically you grab every file um, and you, um, so you gr let's see, well, let's, yeah, so you grab, get, we get all the track files and then split them and their extension in their name and then we save the extension in the set and then return that set. Yeah. Okay. So. Extension. Prefix mutation. So maybe we can do it with Parlet. Uh, mutations, mutations. Okay. Let me just get by mutations. Mutated paths. Okay, so now you have all the paths. You check if it exists. So you grab, so you basically just create, you take everything and you check if it exists. The reason why you're getting the mutations is because you're just checking if the path exists when you add that file, when you add every possible file extension to it. You can start the central idea. Okay. Um, so hmm. next funk list test path hmm. Um, more filter. Message, okay. Uh, yeah, it would be really great if we didn't need to run git to validate a commit message. Um, because if we even remove this, we need the git one to. Uh, no, no, we won't need those commits. The relevant commit is not dependent on validation. So validation is not dependent on relevant commits, right? Yeah. Um, so. Where do we build our path? This can be, uh, what I think can be done is like repo root and then an arg log and then just getting all the extensions at once. Uh, yeah, an arg log and then grab all the extensions, yeah. Um, so let's see, uh, mutated path exists. I'm just thinking, is there a way? So mutated paths, um, execute funk list. Okay, okay, okay. So, and then you have a tuple with the, okay. So, I'm just thinking, could you build, could you work down? No, you can't work down, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let's just go for our glob here um, and grab the list of all the extensions. Um, because you should just be able to do, yeah, our glob and then, um, um, yeah, you, you can just do our glob and grab all the extensions. Because um, git ls tree, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, let's just do that. Um, and so we'll just say that, because debugging this without an OSX system is going to be a huge pain in the ass, so...
Um, but let's maybe submit an issue to track it or something. So, um, but in itself, it is an issue, right? So, uh, other than this, like a, in general, this is an issue. Child. Yeah, we have an issue. There's something automatically. So there's something that. Um, yeah, there's something. Something is something is wrong, right? With the with the testing infrastructure. So that's where we need to add an issue. So like you know, there's something. It's probably an async test case class. Yeah, it's probably an async test case. Um, so let's just. Let's see if I can add. So issues. Right, um, util testing, sync test case, um, issues on OS X with child watcher. Okay. Uh, So we'll track that here. So we'll use um, uh, pathlib.path.rglob to get file extensions instead of using git ls files or ls tree. What was it? Whatever it was. Um, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, we'll track OSX async IO testing issue in this issue. Great. All right. So, um, all right. Any anything else on that, or you you can you have, you can make progress on that now. Yes, I can move on with it. Uh, the, the other thing just about test is the main uh, related to my project. Okay. 1128. 1128. I haven't written a test yet, so I just wanted to know like how the testing should be done. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what you said. Right. Um... Okay, so you don't want the input directory path and the output file path to both be the same definition. Because um, the way that this works is you'll create, you'll end up creating an infinite loop. Um, or, oh, wait, that's not the output. Okay, either Isn't way. Isn't the path um, here? Yeah, so the is thing is doing... input directory path would be, you, you need it to be, okay, so the way that the definitions work right now is let's see where's the link on that um concepts data flows is it here or is it... okay yeah this have you seen this i guess i read this okay so um Okay, so we want to use, um, let's use different definitions for uh, input directory path and output file path. Um, um, cause, so, so the thing is, we're not being. Both of them will have the same primitive, right? 
Uh, yes. Um, so, and, and that would be just like a string in this case. Because um, when we're thinking about primitives, it's a primitive data type is not like a path of dot path object. Um, it's just a string. Um, something that could be, you know, if we were to transport it over the network, what would we serialize it to, right? We would serialize it to a string. Um, so let's use different definitions for input directory path and output file path. Um, so uh, just because, so you're not thinking, so so you want to you want to try to make the definitions as specific as they as specific as possible, essentially. So, um. Because the the input directory path, right? That's a you wouldn't. If the input directory path is different than the output file path, right? This is a directory and this is a zip file, right? And so you couldn't use a zip file where you might use a directory. You see what I'm saying? Because okay. you would want to use so each each thing that's a definition should be able to be used you know wherever that is right so if I were to define this as a zip file right if I say output di directory path is a zip file then anywhere like if I if I had a zip file in the in the in the data flow it would say okay where is a zip file used right and it would say oh well output file path is a zip file. Okay, so this now I know I need to pass, you know, that that's where I'm going to use that zip file input object. Um, but if you just have a path, it would say, okay, well, there's an input directory path and there's an output file path. So let me just take anything that's a path and put it there. Um, and then you're going to end up with. So, so would it be different for different formats, like a zip file path or a tar file path, something like that? Yeah, you would probably want to make it different for different formats. Yeah. So, um, so let's just say, and options is also too big. Um, so, yeah, and let's not do options right now. So let's let's not do options at the moment, because uh, remember we were going to wait on those um, and decide whether we wanted to use operation configuration. Um, like the standard way of configuring things um, or whether we want to use them as inputs, right? So we'll wait on those for now. Um, uh, so this would be like directory and this would be zip file, right? Or zip archive. Uh, so we want to make um, definitions for inputs as specific as possible. Um, uh, if that, def uh, think about it, like uh, as uh, being a piece of data that could be used um, in the same way uh, somewhere else um, uh, by another operation. Uh, for example, um, a operation that so, for example, your unzip operation would take a zip archive. However, it wouldn't know what, it wouldn't be able to unpack uh, a directory. Um, Therefore, um, the uh, you know. Therefore, we know that a definition of a path is not not specific enough. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, 
because the whole idea is to try to chain things together. Um, oh, and then let's say, so yeah, we'll hold off on options for now. Um, all right, and then writing test wise, I would say you can, um, let's see, zip that extract all. Um, do we have that? Is old. That is old. what I have to do. Okay, um, so okay, and then this stuff is the old stuff, so um, so yeah, so let's write some test cases, um. And let's see. Yeah, we'll write some test cases and we will use so mock or not to mock or not to mock. Um, let's see. Yeah, you know, you could use unit test mock. Um, you know, just verify. Hi. I saw some of such some of these types of tests in file source tests, mm -hmm. like test of the file source, and their uh, very specific things were mocked. So I thought it would be a good idea. Yeah, let's let's use mock. Um, so for testing, let's use unit test mock um, rather than creating archives. Uh, reasoning behind this that some archive formats can be uh, tricky to re make reproducible um, archives um, for example uh, C um, so there is, as an example, test service uh, test of this um, this fake process stuff. So here we build a tar file, and I think we had to mock. Uh, no, we didn't mock the. Uh, when there's a gzip compression on a tar file, you have to like mock the uh, time library, which is annoying. Um, and I think zip file might have something similar. Um, I can't remember though. Um, yeah, who knows? Um, not a big deal. Oh, test net, this one. Yeah, so this is where you patch time. So. Um, All right, cool. So let's move on to, so Hashim, what do you have going on? Uh, all right, can I share my screen and yeah. uh, show you? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so uh, this is the notebook uh, that I just pushed. Um, I actually uh, used a different approach, and uh, uh, since you were talking about keeping it precise, uh, I excluded a lot of things in the notebook. Uh, the data, it uh, goes straight to, uh, you know, assembling. Uh, and uh, I know it, it makes sense uh, to have the accuracy part uh, if we want to show uh, that ensemble has the better accuracy. 
I, I I just wanted, wasn't sure if we want to go down that road and uh, you know uh, try to tune different models and see if uh, you know we get the better accuracy and try different uh, data sets. But I can do I that. I would if say you, you know I would say yeah I mean so so let's wrap up the tutorial as is. Let's make sure that we include the accuracy stuff, right? Even though it'll show that it's worse. Mm -hmm. And then we can uh, pick a better data set, um, you know, in the future, right? Um, so let's 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 see. So what what is our timeline? What, what week is this? We're it, it, it's it's not an issue for me. I can uh, I can do it right now as well. You know, uh, yeah. If you want to go down that road, uh, might as well just do it. Yeah, I think that it would be. Good, because we're into week, um, this is week three now, right? So, and you have, you have, like, does that, does that put you behind on your schedule? I think you're still pretty on track with that, right? Because don't you have, you, you combined two of them into one, and then this is the third one. So you'd still be on track if you worked on this this week, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's do that then. Um, let's, let's, let's try to find a data set that, that you know, uh, performs better, right? And you can always, yeah. Um, okay, because, uh, and we will have to keep this uh, stack test predictions, uh, even if we're, if we're, you, you know, uh, getting the, all the accuracies, because uh, we, uh, you suggested previously that maybe we can get rid of this stack just predictions. Um, I got. I also got rid of two of the models that. Uh, yeah. We were using. We were actually using four models. Now we're using two. Okay. Did you still show them initially? Like, did you still show them right in that bar graph that you had? Yeah. Here. Okay. Great. And then you basically. No. no said, I, I removed oh. that one as well. Okay. Hmm. okay. I can get it back. Here. Yeah, I think that was good, right? Because then we could say, hey, you know, we want to create, you know, we, we, we tested a few and we saw that these are probably going to screw it up. And, you know, now, I don't know, maybe, I mean, you know, there's a possibility that they're accurate in ways that the other ones are not. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it I mean, depends the, on, uh, you know, what type of uh, tutorial you want because uh, I mean we have already gone through uh, the accuracy part uh, other yeah. than this but uh, if we want to include it here uh, it's okay we can do that as well I mean I mean I think that the moral of the story is right let's have an example that shows how the accuracy increases with the ensemble model right so because um, yeah. that's kind of the, the take home point here right um, so, so whether that means including them or not including them or whatever, right. Or changing the data set, let's just figure out a way to make it, um, make that, you know, make it make sense to the end user. Cause they see that the accuracy goes up. Right. Sure. Sure. That's cool. Well, all right. Let's do that. And then the uh, testing right, notebook and, PR. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure why uh, this one was popping up. Uh, it says that the model was not found and the list only contained the SLR. Okay. Um, uh, when it runs the cell containing the loading models part. Okay. Um, oh, SLR was not found in SLR. Okay, it looks like the scikit models aren't installed. Um, Oh, I think this is just a, oh yeah, we probably, so there's the, the test run twice. Um, 
so it runs once without any models installed and, and another time uh, with with all the um, plugins installed. Let's see, where's the documentation? Uh, let's say testing. All right, so yeah, so we just need to use that required plugins thing. Um, so it's just this call to um, you basically change, modify the test case to say, um, take a look at the link I just sent in the chat. So this will essentially raise a skip if it's not installed. And then, because the main package runs tests twice. So the first time it runs tests, it um, it uh, doesn't have any of the plugins installed just to make sure that, you know, the main package works without plugins installed, um, except for skips, uh, like, you know, intentional skips. Um, so we don't have any errors. Um, and then it installs all the plugins and then it runs the test again. Um, so this is, see that required plugins, DF of all config PNG. Um, so, oh, and we need to change that now because integration CLI test doesn't exist anymore. Um, okay, so. Yeah, we need to change that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So let's add. Let's just add that self dot required plugins to the test case, and then it should work. Should pass in the CI because it'll have the required plugin installed. Um, does that make sense? Uh calling it without any requirements, right? Uh, uh, without any uh, parameters? Well, let's see. So what, I mean, it looks like you required the FML model scikit, which, where's the test case for this? Let's see. So let's see. Okay, yeah, because test note. Oh, I see. So because the test notebooks, all like the test notebooks, quite likely require a model psychic. Okay, so I see. I see where the confusion is. Okay, so what we should do here is let's put in that class test notebook. Okay, um, and where is this? So okay, yeah, and that's not documented. So let's document that. Okay, so. This is style and this is testing. All right, so. All right, so. Okay, I'm updating the docs. Okay, so. Um, you need to do, let's see, where is that other one? So in test notebooks, I think we have this required plugins. Yeah. So if in test notebooks, you would want to say, um, like the test notebooks class, you'd want to say required plugins equals DFML model scikit. Um, and I put that in the chat too, um, like as a class. Uh, I see. Variable. Um, and this is like a, basically a way of saying, so instead of at a test case basis, it's at a class level. Um, so uh, if so, I'll just write this in the docs too. So if all, if all uh, <laughs> functions or all methods within a class require a plugin or set of plugins. Um, they, those plugins names can be listed in the required plugins. 
class variable. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I've updated the docs. So let's see. So yeah, you would just add that to test notebook um, because your notebooks are going to require Scikit, um, and so it'll it'll make sure to run them. Uh, it'll it'll skip, all right. and then it'll it'll run the actual test when it's. Um, uh, once, once it, um, once it has installed all the plugins for the second run. All right. Anything else from your end? Yeah, there was uh, another error, I think. Yeah, this error with XGBoost. Oh, right, so uh, XGBoost could not be loaded. Okay, so I think this is the same. Is this the same thing? Yeah, might or... as well be the same. Error. Yeah, so we might just want to add it to. Is this also in a notebook test case? Is this a, is this a notebook that's being tested? Yeah, yeah. All okay, right, so let's add that yeah. to the set of required plugins yes. as well then. Okay. Sweet. All right. Great. Um, so let's and see. I think uh, you were just discussing this one, uh, and it's fixed. Um, it should be the style one, yeah. So that would be a pull from master, yes. So, um, or a rebase from master. So. Okay. Uh, as a follow-up to our one-on-one, one-on-one, I also wanted to discuss a little about uh, multi-output models if mm -hmm. we have time. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I went ahead and uh, found the list of models supported by you found yeah them. here it is right. uh, so the list was more about uh, multi class uh, uh, multi output classifier models mm -hmm. and uh, and then you have uh, some multi-output models that only support uh, binary classification. Uh, and there are some models that uh, support multi-class classification okay. in multi-output. So these are uh, the only models that uh, support uh, multi-class, multi-output classification. OK. So I mean, um, I think. And, uh, uh, yeah. I think that um, you know the the strategy stays the same here, right? It's it's basically you have a different entry point for each one. Um, if you can get them, you want to target target the ones that you can wrap with the same abstraction, right? Um, so if you can wrap six of those, right, then that's going to be your your target is is six of those, you know, using the same sort of code, right? Um, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? So kind of like scikit base wraps, you know, mini models in the same way. Um, you know, you, yeah. I would say target target whatever you're going to get the most bang bang for your buck.
One second here. All right. Okay. Now I can see. So again. is my screen visible? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so let's start. So I will get, get you through the code because if you haven't probably seen it. So this is the uh, base class, the scorer base, where we have uh, the scikit scorer config. Uh, we have the scorer context, and we have the score method here. And then we have the actual scikit scorer. And in this file, I have actually uh, imported all the methods. Uh, some of them are regression, clustering, and classification uh, score methods. So all these methods, I'm actually uh, creating a context for it. And I'm then uh, uh, subclassing it from the base class. And then I'm uh, adding it to the entry point. Great, great. So the I have also written tests for it. So Great. this is actually one of the tests I have written. Uh, but actually, I have written uh, like there are like three hundred tests which I have. Yeah, written. yeah. So you 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 followed the same pattern that we did for the models. I see. Yes, I get Great. model. So the Great. problem which I'm facing here is uh, when uh, so. So here I'm facing the problem. So when I have written self dot scorer, this scorer method is actually uh, one of the scikit methods. Okay. But the problem here is it is also taking self as well as its uh, oh, position yeah. parameter. So here's um. So this was the error which I'm getting here. Yeah. So I would say. Oh man, there's several ways to do this. I can't remember which one is the best way. Um, does anybody have? Does anybody have a? Way? Let's see. So one way I usually do is, is Funk Tools partial. Um, let's see. Um, there's a way to unbind it from the class though, but I can't remember which one is better. So. Um, uh, so is this a common issue or something? Um, well, uh, it, it's a common issue like when you start so, adding okay. functions to <laughs> classes um, dynamically. Um, so let's see, self.score. Um, I think, so where do you add self.score to the, to the class? OK, so I actually add it to this test. So here I'm providing the class here. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it actually sets up the uh, model, well, and it trains it. So here I'm doing it, providing it. So class dot score, and then in the accuracy we are providing it here. So self dot score, but self dot score so is the score itself. Okay, so it's the class. So here we are. Mm, so it's an instance of the class, class, right? So where it looks like check consistent length is mad because why true was actually mean absolute error score so the fourth line up in the stack trace so the very the very top line in the stack trace we're looking at check consistent length uh not 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 the one we could see so basically uh the okay so let's see so self.score why true Y pred. Um, so now we're into scikit, um, mean absolute error, check consistent length. So let's check out the score class itself. The blaze class? Yeah. So this is where we call self.score. Right. So what? So it passes self. It's basically it's passing self for y true. 
So where do we set self.score here? So it's actually set in the context. So okay. And let's avoid doing the import lib, context. import module stuff. Um, so let's avoid okay. doing that. Um, we had started to do that at one point, and then we realized it wasn't um, it wasn't something good to continue doing. So um, let's see. So okay, um, yeah, and that's a holdover that we that still exists in the scikit stuff. So um, okay, so self score equals self parent scikit score. Okay, and is that a function then? So yeah, it's just a function. Okay, so I would say when you do try this, try doing uh, self.score equals static method, um, uh, all one word, static method, so self.score, so sorry, on line 27. Uh, yeah, so static method, and then, uh, you know, put self.parent.psychic score within that. Yeah, perfect. So hopefully this, let's see what happens now. So just make sure line 46 doesn't have that equals, yeah. All right, great. So let's see what happens. static method object is not callable. Okay, so that doesn't work. All right, I would just say functools.partial. Um, if you just say, instead of static method, say functools.partial, and usually that works. Um, well, let's see. Tools. Oh, partial without the S. Still mad? Okay, what was the other way? Yep. And I know there's several ways within our code base. <laughs> that do this. Um, the question is, where are they? Um, let's see. So, um, okay. So, okay, grab, okay. Uh, is it, it should be in, where is it, where is it, where is it? Um, where do we have this? It could be in DF. Uh, I don't think. Okay, it might be in the operation stuff. Um, no, because I think we just pass funk there. Um, let's see. I know we do this somewhere. Um, you know what we can do is you can just create a method that calls score. Um, let's see, so self that score. So you could say. Um, Let's see something. Yeah. No, where is it? It has to do with underscore underscore git. Or no, that is okay. Python unbind uh, method from class. Git unbind class method. Okay. Oy vey. Um, this 
is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would just say let's use some kind of helper method here. Um, I know that we do this somewhere else, so this is silly, but um, let's just do some kind of helper, helper method that says, like, if you say self, you know, you could say, or wait a minute, now this is going to run into the same issue. So self.score is a, it, it just gets bound to the class. Why is it getting bound to the class automatically? Um, I also tried, like, uh, providing keyword arguments. Yeah. But then it started throwing error like you're providing two values for a single keyword. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because YPRED, I think, is taking the first keyword argument right now um, because it, they're not using like this strict um, keyword argument thing. So I would say because uh, they're doing the, the way it works right now, I believe it's doing keyword or positional for YPRED. And so um, if you pass self like self is self is actually y true and then y true is actually y pred and then y pred is actually some keyword argument um so let's see i mean what else can we do here what this is ridiculous so why am it's i'm blanking on this let's just put it um self score what if you do self funk tools dot partial um so right on the return on line 47 um do funk tools dot partial this is like there's overhead on this but this is annoying so partial and then self dot score and then put it right uh, put the in parenthesis right after score so right between the open parenthesis so yeah so self score open paren right there yeah or in paren I mean yeah thanks and then delete the one at the end of the line and now let's try this. Oops, sorry. No, delete the parentheses at the end of the line, not the call. So, so you still so controls. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Don't call. Sorry, don't call. So functools.partial will return a. It should return a call to self.score that doesn't involve self, and then we can pass. Yeah, now we can pass y true and y pred hopefully. Um, and let's delete the self, the funk tools dot partial wrap up there on line 20 something. Where is this? Where was that code? Oh, I think it was some TPM stuff. Okay. Yeah. Try running this. Man, it really doesn't like that. Okay, let me go look at this old code here. Okay. So. Okay, partial. Okay, well, we don't want to pass self. How do we get rid of passes to self? Um, okay. We don't pass self. What the hell? Um, partial. Okay, so if you pass partial, but... Ah, here we go. Is this it? Look at the method. It's a good module type value for Oh no, that's getting from the dictionary. Um, how do we unbind this stupid thing? I would just uh, okay. So why don't you just set it as a property of a dictionary? <laughs> why don't you just set it as a property of a dictionary for now? Um, and like create a dictionary, make it the only property in the dictionary and then call it from the dictionary and it shouldn't try to bind to the dictionary. It shouldn't try to put itself in. It shouldn't, it shouldn't try to put the dictionary in where self is. So if you say self, um, for example, if you were to say, um,
Um, let's see. Let's see. Something like this. Um, so, yeah, self dot score. Yeah, so, so, but don't do app property, right? So you can just do this on line 28 and say self score equals, um, you know, or let's see, why actually could we just say self dot parent dot scikit score? Like, do we even need to say self score? Like, could we just say self dot? I haven't dot tried score? that. Yeah, we let's can just try, try that. that. <laughs> Yeah, let's just try this, see what happens, right? Damn it. Got main apps. Expected sequence. Okay, let's make sure we're looking at the right line here. Um, so is line 47 in the backtrace? Uh, let's see. Yes, it is. Okay, so expected sequence of array like got mean absolute error score. It really, really, really wants to pass self. Um, there is an easy way to do this. I just cannot remember what the hell it is. Okay. Do not. Okay, I don't know. We're going to have to look more at this because I don't want to take any more time. Um, so let's see. Okay. Yeah, let's... let's. Man, this is a weird one because this should not be this difficult. Um, I would The last thing I would say is try functools.partial on line 47 the same way we just did on self.parent.scikit-score. Or self. Wait, self.parent.scikit-score was set when we created the new type, right? So it should be fine. Yeah, I would try functuals partial here. Yes. And if this doesn't work, try functuals partial when you pass scikit score. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, then the last thing I would try is when you do that uh, self dot. So when you set scikit core, when you scikit score, when you create the new type, try to pass functools dot partial there. Uh, in the test it said. Uh, in the in the wherever the base classes are getting created for the scikit so scikit score scikit score yeah scikit scores uh, yeah so, so try this is where yeah, I'm passing the method for it. yeah so method you know so yeah I would do I would try functuals that partial there. Yes, it passed. It worked. Yay. Yeah, something about that functools partial makes it so that it doesn't, it no longer tries to bind things. I'm glad we figured that out. All right, cool. Are you stuck on anything else at the moment? Yep, yes, it worked. All right. Are you stuck on anything else at the moment? Anything else? No. Cool. cool. So I had to one one thing to ask. Mm. So. 
so in the uh, model scorer so this is the scorer which actually uses the model itself mm-hmm. to yeah it calls like the model score function uh and it uses the model's default score method to give the to get the accuracy mm-hmm. because the clustering part thing is also implemented in this as well okay sorry i in just missed what well. you I, I missed what you just said there because i i my network dropped for a second so what, what was it you just said you said the... okay. so uh, uh let me restate uh so uh there are two scorers in this i get one is which actually uses the uh models score man the default score method to give the accuracy mm-hmm. and other is the psychic matrix method which are implementing so yeah so for the clustering part it is for is not there so far he scorer which act for the clustering part here as all right so we should probably just throw an exception if we this get this is the model i also tried to uh, the uh sql and med so that's the thing okay so, so, so i was asking whether we can uh yep yep go ahead so i think uh so okay so, let's all right um i think this might be one of those where we need to expose what model type it is is that is that what you're thinking here as well to check if it's cluster and then basically throw an exception Fuck. damn it is it are, are you thinking you might want to check if it's a clustering model and then throw an exception if it is This is not going. 